tonight we'll talk about China's debt crisis. It is ruining countries and it's hurting China too. In a nutshell, this is what happened. China went around the world pumping money into economies that were not robust. The idea was to buy their loyalty. In some cases it worked, but in many more, the money sank. Now the countries cannot pay back and China needs the cash because its own cities are sinking under debt. We're talking about trillions of dollars here, unsustainable loans, money that China wants to recover but is failing to. This story has three parts. Number one, the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, the centerpiece of Xi Jinping's foreign policy, also a weapon for the Chinese state to extend its debt trap. Well, that weapon has backfired. Belt and Road is now Belt and Road Blocks. The projects are stuck because partner countries are not being able to manage their debt. So China has, given, has been forced to give out bailouts. And it's not working out for either side. Let me show you some numbers. From the year 2000 to 2021, China gave 128 bailouts. These were in 22 countries, 128 bailouts. Their total value was $240 billion. And most of this was thanks to BRI. A large chunk of these bailouts were given only after 2017. BRI began in 2013. Between 2019 and 2021, China gave bailouts worth $104 billion. So the trend is quite clear. China's bad loans multiplied thanks to Belt and Road projects. Now look at the countries that got these loans. Argentina, Belarus, Ecuador, Egypt, Laos, Mongolia, Pakistan, Suriname, Sri Lanka, Turkey, Ukraine and Venezuela. In terms of geography, China has covered a lot. These countries may be in different continents, but they have two things in common. One, they all got Chinese loans. And two, they all got IMF loans. IMF is the International Monetary Fund, the lender of last resort. What do these similar similarities tell you? China is exploiting developing economies. It is piling them with more debt. And it gives money even when the risks are clear. A bank might not lend to some of these countries. That's because they may not be able to service their debt. But China throws its checkbook at them. Then they default. They're not able to pay. In some cases, China lends them more cash. In other cases, it extends the tenure of the loans, essentially kicking the can down the road. Either way, these economies are saddled with debt. I'll give you two examples, Sri Lanka and Zambia. This is part two of our story. Sri Lanka got an IMF bailout recently. Now it has to restructure its debt, which means all lenders will have to take a haircut. The lenders will have to give up on some of their money. But China does not like the idea. So it hasn't joined the restructuring plan yet. One year into Sri Lanka's suffering, China has just agreed to discuss the plan. And how much money are we talking about? How much money does Sri Lanka owe to China? $7.4 billion. This was till the end of 2022. Then we have Zambia, the same story. The country is buried under a giant pile of Chinese debt, debt worth $6 billion. This was till the end of 2021. Just like Sri Lanka, Zambia needs an IMF bailout. And just like with Sri Lanka, China is coming in the way. Zambia has to restructure its debt. But China is imposing new conditions. Last month, China said the World Bank should be included in the process. Zambia's finance minister was furious. This is what he said, and I'm quoting, discussions at high levels like those just make our situation worse because what we're looking for is urgent solutions, not discussions that may drag out the matter. He was clearly referring to China here. So Beijing is the villain in Zambia's story. It is also the villain in Sri Lanka's story, and it knows this then why does it not give debt relief to these countries? Because that would mean loss of money and face. And China can afford neither. China is the largest bilateral creditor in the world. As of 2020, China has lent about $1.5 trillion. And this money has gone to more than 150 countries. Imagine having to waive off $1.5 trillion in loans. And I must say this here, not all countries want to waiver at this point. But if you make an exception for some, Others may expect it. So this is about setting precedent and setting expectations. And China cannot afford it because its own cities are buried under debt. That's the third part of our story. The local governments in China are in urgent need of cash. They have a massive debt pile. 
And when I say massive, I mean something to the tune of $5 trillion. You heard that right, $5 trillion. In 2022, local governments in China had loans worth more than $5 trillion. Now they're looking for new ways to raise cash. And new loans are out of question because Beijing has issued strict orders. Listen to this. We should prevent a buildup of new debts while working to reduce existing ones. Yes, they should. The question is, how? You cannot export your way out of this. China cannot revive its economy without fixing its debt problem. And it's the top focus of the government right now. They're approaching 2023, or whatever is left of the year, as the year to ensure the revival of the Chinese economy. Xi Jinping has appointed a new premier. His KRA, or key responsibility area, is to bring China's economy back on track. Because this debt pile is like a house of cards. One wrong move, one bad decision, and it will all come crashing down.